So let's determine what the, the duty cycle needs to be. So let's take a look at the data sheet for the servo that I'm going to be using. So I've got a high-tech HS322HD. So let's see if we can find some information on that. Okay, so I found the specifications for the PWM, or Pulse Data, for the high-tech servos. And this is for all their analog servos. And the duty cycle needs to be between 0.9 milliseconds to 2.1 milliseconds with 1.5, which is right in the middle of the 0.9 and 2.1, as the center. And the pulse refreshes every 20 milliseconds. We've already established this. So now we need to create the duty cycle between 0.9 and 2.1 milliseconds. So if 40,000 represents 20 milliseconds, one millisecond should be 40,000 divided by 20. So let's see what that is. So the low end of the duty cycle is, two, is 0.9 milliseconds. And with our 2,000 counts per millisecond, that would be 0.9 times 2,000, which is equal to 1,800 milliseconds or 1,800 counts. That would equal the low end duty cycle. I'll put this on another line here. And 2.1 milliseconds is equal to 2.1 times 2,000, which is equal to 4,200. So you can see that our low end is 1,800. That is the horn at one position. And 4,200 is at the this would be the minimum position and this would be the maximum position. And I think this would be maybe, let's say, zero degrees and 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and set up this. I think what we need to do first, we need to work on this library just a little bit more because we, I think we're going to have to separate out something to make it work. Because uh, I don't want this to be repeated all the time when I'm making a change to the prescaler period and duty cycle. I don't want to have to keep putting this code in or running that code. So I'm going to create another one called void pwm channel 4 set period and duty cycle or set, uh, uh, no, set parameters. I'm going to say set parameters. That's a little bit easier. And then I'm going to take the parameters in here. I still want this to stay because when I'm initializing it, so we can take this prescaler period and duty cycle and just copy it to this one. And so what we're doing is we're going to, or we're go what we're going to do is we're actually going to replace this portion here with this. So we're not repeating the code at least. So whatever we have set here, we're going to pass it into this, uh, this function. And we can also have this function available to us to set parameters in the main. So let's go ahead and do that. So we don't need to do this anymore. We can take this out. All right. So let's go ahead and put in the PWM channel for set parameters. And I'm going to put in the same things that I have here. Actually, I need to change this to at least like 1800. So let's do that. Okay. So now I'm, I have it at this location and then I want to change it to 4200. So it swings in the other direction, but it's going to do this so fast that the the servo is not even going to move because, or it may jitter, because it's trying to change the, um, it's trying to change the location too quickly. So we need to put a, a time delay right here. So let's make it 100,000. It may not, that may not be enough. So let's go ahead and put a 100,000 between them. So we should have the, the servo turning from zero degrees to 180 degrees and back 
So it's just gonna go back and forth. Let's see if that works. First, we need to connect the servo. So we'll need a five volt connection at the red. We'll need a ground at the black. And at the yellow, we can have our PWM. I don't think the yellow needs to have five volts as its pulse. I believe I remember seeing in the data sheet that it can be um, it can be three volts. I think it was like three to five volts. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll we'll put the signal in on the PWM here. Five volts in the middle pin and ground on the end. Before I actually connect the servo, I want to build and flash this microcontroller first, just so it can be in the right state, so I don't cause the servo to go to any extremes. And it looks like I have a, okay, I'm not even using my variable, unused variable. I'll just take it out and re recompile it just for the fun. Something else. Ah, okay. I see the problem here. The I put this function after I actually am using it. So it needs to be before this, or I need to create a prototype. I like to do this instead. All right. This is like sort of a programming thing. I'm sure there are opinions both ways on this. All right, so let's go ahead and try to compile it again. Good, it worked. I'm gonna go ahead and flash it. Okay, so the mark controller is flashed. Let's go ahead and connect the servo. Okay, just plugged it in, and you can see that it's going a little bit too fast for the servo to handle the instructions going all the way back and forth. So let's increase the increase the uh, time delays and see if that helps. Okay, we can see that we have successfully been able to connect the servo to the PWM, we were able to modify its position by using the PWM. The one, th one thing I did have to do was I had to change the location of my five volts because I was causing the LCD to reset every time the servo was changing its position. Rather than applying the five volts from my ST link, this is the five volts here, I've elected to use a battery pack instead because I don't want any interference or back EMF from the servo affecting my circuit. So in this type of situation, you want to have the, the battery pack plugged into the red lead. And you also want the black lead from the battery pack, which is the ground, to be plugged into the black lead but you also want the ground from the circuit to be plugged in to the servo ground lead. I'm actually having a difficult time getting the both of these wires into this small connector, so it's just as good to put the ground from the battery pack into a ground on the circuit. And then you can take the pin from the PWM and put that into the yellow lead of the servo. And that way you'll have a voltage source that's external from the circuit and the, the servo will not interfere with the, the circuit in any way. And you won't have any problems with, with the LCD because if you did try to use the five volts from the circuit, the LCD may not function correctly. And as you can see with the external battery pack, 
and the flashed microcontroller, we have a functioning circuit and the external voltage source is actually what's recommended from the manufacturer of the servo. It's, they recommend using battery cells to power the servo. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh, look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh, no, that's not me. Oh, yeah. And go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.